This week's episode is on how to get a true red from Cordinaria smithii, especially if you've been using it and getting an orange and you're wanting to dial into red. This is the video for you. I do have a video on my channel about how to dye with this mushroom, and you'll find that in the link in the description below. But in this video, I wanted to dial into two factors, which may be why you're ending up with an orange instead of a red. Now, if you haven't dyed with this mushroom, this video will still help you because you're gonna be aware of two factors to control, so you'll get that true red. In the Cordinarius genus share three characteristics. Number one, they're found in woodland habitats. Number two, they have rusty to cinnamon brown spores. And number three, they all have a cortina. Now the cortina is a silk webby or cobwebby veil that connects the cap and the stalk in young mushrooms and disintegrates as that cap expands. And you can often find remnants of it under the cap covered in those rusty spores. Prior to 2012, Cordinaria smithii was known as Cordinaria phoenicius variant occidentalis. And you will find it under that name in great mushroom books like Demystifying Mushrooms. Now, this mushroom in particular has two very distinct characteristics. One is that convex cap that becomes planar or smooths out at the edges is a deep maroon or a blood red, or it can get a little bit into the brownie reds as it ages. The gills are blood red, and then that stalk is yellowish. So if you see the yellowish stalk, bright red, maroony red cap, you've got a Cordinaria smithii. The cap can grow from about two and a half to eight centimeters and the stalk from three to about 10 centimeters. So it's considered a medium sized mushroom. It can grow in solitary conditions or in groupings, uh, usually under conifers. And here in the Southwest coast of British Columbia, it tends to come out in November. Now, when I dyed with that mushroom for that video, I ended up getting a lovely red. When I recreated the steps though, this time I got an orange and I was really curious on why that was. It turns out two things happen. So here you go. Here's my orange. It was not what I was expecting because the ratio is two to one like I did before. But for some reason, this time I got an orange. Now, when you look into it, here's how you get this orange. Number one is when you dye with the cap and the stem. As you can see here, I have the stems as well. Now, the stems have a much, much lower concentration of dye. And when you use the exhaust baths with this, you end up getting into the orange range. So the fact that the part of the weight that I was looking at was stems meant that I could be pushing that uh, dye to lower concentrations and getting an orange. The other thing to keep in mind is your pH. Alum is inherently acidic. And the water here where I live is inherently, it sits at about a 6.5. So eventually as this dries, after you dye, it can shift into more of an orange. And that is what I think happened. Number one is that my concentration was lower because I included the stems and or the stipes. And the second one is that with alum on the wool, it does push that wool into being acidic. So in order to get my red, I was going to have to change my approach in two ways. One, when I dried my Cordinaria smithii mushrooms, I dried the caps and the stipes or the stem separately. Now don't throw out the stems, dry them, and you can use them exactly the same way. But this time when you're aiming for a bright orange, you'll get a great one with those stems. So pulling the cap and the stems and then dyeing separately allows you to get two completely different colors from your pot. Doing this allows me, as you can see, to just chop up those caps, which has that higher concentration of dye, to make sure that when I'm weighing out my two to one dry mushroom to fiber, that it's just that nicely concentrated caps that's number one. And the second thing I was gonna have to do is add a little bit of washing soda to ensure that the pH was going to stay higher throughout the process. And even when it came to washing my wool after the dye to ensure that I was 
adding a little bit of washing soda to ensure that it was high. Now, not very much, maybe about an eighth of a teaspoon was gonna do it. And now that I've accounted for both of those factors, the rest of my process is exactly the same as you'll see in the video. I'm gonna simmer my mushrooms for an hour, I'm gonna simmer my fiber with the mushrooms for an hour, and then I left it overnight to settle. In the morning, this is what I came back to. This is the rinsed and dried final product, and I got the red. So hopefully this video was useful to you. Um, I had a lot of fun doing it. So this video was actually only a side branch or a side quest, if you will, on the road to designing, dyeing, and knitting for another video where I'm going to make uh, my own mushroom dyed traditional Shetland cap. But these are the colors that I ended up with. I really wanted to cover the red today and how I did manage to shift the wool from being an orange to being a red. And all together, it was super, super fun. I really hope that it's useful um, and enjoy. Um, I also wanted to show you at the end of this video, there is a section on uh, exhaust dyeing and the colors that I can get with Cordinaria smithii just doing exhaust and why I do think it's worth uh, you giving that a go because you've gone through all the problem, the trouble anyway of setting it all up. Why not get every single molecule of color you can out of it? So happy dyeing. Feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on dyeing. Is it nice and red? Yeah. Super duper red? I would say a burgundy, but it's still kind of red. Fair enough. Last thing I wanted to say is don't forget about your exhaust baths. You've gone through all the trouble of setting this up and finding these mushrooms. And so why not get the most out of it? And so these are all exhaust baths that I did after I got my red. As you can see, it does push the dye into the orange. But again, these are gorgeous, lovely shades that I will use in a weaving. So happy dyeing, folks.